Okay, in this video, we're going to start thinking about cells in terms of how they pass on information to the next generation of cells. You can view a cell as just a vehicle for deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, as it's the DNA that is passed on from one generation of cells to the next. That is, the DNA is replicated by making copies of the DNA currently in the cell and then passing on these copies to the next generation of cells. However, keep in mind that the DNA is just a blueprint to make proteins, and it is the proteins that give the cells life and function. Now, the key segment of the DNA that encodes for our proteins is called the gene. The genes are effectively the units of inheritance, the blueprint that is passed on. So, how many genes do we have? How many units of inheritance do we pass on? Well, we are important. We are the smartest thing on the planet. We are the pinnacle of evolution. We are complex. So you would think we would have a lot of genes. Well, surprise, surprise, we don't. Initial estimates were that we had at least 100,000 genes, but it turns out we only have around 20,000 genes. Only 20,000. That isn't many. That is quite a small number. We have 20,000 genes, so does an oak tree, like this magnificent one you can see just behind me, have more or less genes than a human? Now, us humans, as I said earlier, are marvellously complex creatures. We are at the pinnacle of evolution on this planet, or we like to think so. So, of course, we have more genes than a tree. After all, a human has 3 billion base pairs in their DNA, and an oak only has about half of that. So, of course, humans will have more genes. Wrong. Oaks have at least 50,000 genes, more than double that of a human. So why? Why would an oak tree have so many genes? So, why would an oak tree have more genes than humans? Well, humans can do something that oaks can't. We can walk away. You see, we can walk away from hostile environments where it is too hot, too cold, too wet or too dry. We can walk away from places where there are too many pests or too much disease. Oaks can't. They can't walk. They have to survive using their genes and the proteins those genes code for. Hence, they need more genes. However, if you think the number of genes an organism has is down to its size, that is, the bigger the organism, the more genes it has, well, the humble potato and the tomato, and I'm sorry, I didn't have any fresh tomatoes, both have genomes of around 840 to 900 million base pairs, which is less than humans, but they have 35,000 to 40,000 genes each. So again, more genes than a human. So we're made up of proteins that are encoded by our genes. However, not all DNA is in genes. There is a lot of DNA that doesn't code for proteins, and this DNA is referred to as non-coding DNA. However, don't think that non-coding DNA is, as was originally thought, just junk DNA with no function. It is not. It has a range of functions in the cell. Now, collectively, the coding and non-coding DNA is referred to as the genome and the study of our genome is genomics, and the study of our genes is genetics. 